Welcome to the Activated Storyteller's 37th podcast, March 22nd, 2007. This week's story is What Other People Think. It's a Grimm Brothers tale. Hi, I'm Dennis. And I'm Kimberly. And I'm Zephyr. And together we are... The Activated Storytellers. And we are coming to you live. Well, not live. We are recording to you recorded from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I feel pretty live. I don't know about you. <laughs> I feel pretty recorded. How do you feel? Pre-recorded. <laughs> Pre- I also feel rather edited, but anyway. <laughs> and we have some friends here with us today. Oh, that's what they are. That's huh? what they are. Yes, they are. I know a lot of people wonder if you're living on the road full time, is it possible to have friends? So we're going to answer that question. I thought these were IRS agents incognito. Want to introduce them? Do I want to do it? Well, I think they can introduce themselves. I'm pretty sure they know who they are. <laughs> All right. Let's find out if they know who they are. Come on up here, guys. Hi, I'm Wiley. Uh, I'm Zephyr's friend. I met him because we were both doing the HSFM thing together. Which was an online uh, radio show that they used to do. Um, Wiley and Zephyr met online, and then they got to meet in person in New York City. It was the first time I think we met you guys. And now we're in the same band. Go figure. And Wiley has some really good recipes you can do with peppers. <laughs> <laughs> One-time incident. Uh, <laughs> who else is here? Hey, I'm Nash. I'm uh, Wiley's brother and ex-band member. <laughs> and, yes, we also, of course, met Nash in uh, New York City for the first time. And we have... I'm Trina, and I've known Wiley and Nash since I was about three. Unfortunately. yes and these are people that zephyr stays in touch with all the time he's on the phone that's where you can find him with our free weekend minutes and free evening minutes talking to his buddies and you know what we're we're going to draft these guys to be actors in just a moment yes we are but first we'd like to talk a little bit about um salem right And we're going to draft these guys to be actors, just to prove that we get paid to do what anybody could do. (laughs) A little bit about El Salem. We've been having some fun walking around town, and Dennis and I took a bicycle ride. Winston-Salem, North Carolina, uh, part of it is Salem, and part of that is Old Salem, a historic district which has uh, reenactors in costume. Rather similar to Plymouth Plantation and some other places we've been. And we did take a great bike ride. We, we discovered uh, a great bicycle trail just accidentally. We didn't know it was there. We started riding and stumbled upon this trail. Well, we didn't stumble because we were on wheels, but whatever the wheeled equivalent of stumbling is, we did. And discovered this wonderful trail along the river, and then it led to a lake. And we went all the way around the lake and ended up doing a, about a 15-mile bike ride that we thought would just be a few minutes all right. In the meantime, Zephyr was hanging out with his friends in um, Old Salem. I'm going to turn this over to the experts and let them tell you a bit about Old Salem and the town there. What goes on? Trina. Um, You're on. <laughs> <laughs> Trina goes to school right there on the grounds of Old Salem, so she's the expert. Yeah, it's my first year at that school, but um, we go down to Old Salem a lot because it's really nearby, so we can walk there easily and get away from the asylum. <laughs> Winston-Salem actually used to be two towns and then uh, called Winston and Salem, go figure. And then they decided to merge and they just called it Winston-Salem. But it is interesting that it used to be two towns. Now, the real mystery is why didn't they call it Salem-Winston? That's alphabetical. Uh, now, Old Salem is home to the Old Salem Toy Museum, a museum in which they have toys. And also... The Tannenberg organ, which is America's largest 18th century organ. I think that um, Old Salem is kind of a lot like the New Salem, except older. Actually, it reminds me a lot of Salem, Massachusetts. (laughs) Which is ironic. It's like kind of almost twin towns, except, of course, Old Salem doesn't have the witch trials. But, um, uh, yeah, they're very similar in some ways, architecturally. and, And also they both kind of do this living history thing. They definitely do, yes. And so Trina, Trina goes to an all-girls school there, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Nash and Wiley are homeschooled, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. can hear you way back there, Nash. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to get on to our story this week. It is What Other People Think. Once upon a time, a farmer and his son went to the market to sell a donkey. However, they loaded the beast into the wheelbarrow so that it would not reach market 
tired and worn out. Here you are, Junior. I'll push the wheelbarrow. You don't know how to operate machinery. Uh, yes, you push wheelbarrow. Very nice. And they pushed it along the road. When people saw such a peculiar sight... Is that man mad? Whoever saw a donkey being taken to the market in a wheelbarrow? The poor farmer became more and more confused. For the farther he went, the louder the comments became. And the more people gossiped. It was the last straw when, as they passed the blacksmith's forge... Hey, do you want me to put shoes on you? You're doing all the work. Oh, that's very funny. Hardy har har. So the farmer stopped, heaved the animal out of the wheelbarrow, <laughs> and climbed onto its back while the son walked behind. Uh, giddy up, or whatever it is you say to a donkey, I don't know. <laughs> Are we there yet? But that made matters even worse. A group of women going home from market instantly complained. Look at that, you cruel man. Fancy great lump like you riding a donkey while your poor little boy runs along behind. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. People heaped insult upon insult. Here, have another insult. Here, you mother words, me boots. Put another insult. one on top of that insult. insult. Till the unhappy farmer slid off the donkey. He simply didn't know what to do next. He took off his cap and mopped his brow. Why do I have such a hot brow all of a sudden? I don't know, but uh, why do you use mop to touch it with? Because the broom didn't quite work as well. I never imagined it could be so difficult to take a donkey to market. Then he hoisted his little boy onto the donkey and walked along behind. Uh, boy, you know, you're not so little anymore. This time, a cluster of men began to protest. Look at that. There's a young lad sitting pretty as he please on top of a donkey while his weary old father has to go on foot. It's a disgrace! Yeah, you can't tell this younger generation anything anymore. Once again, father and son came to a halt. How on earth could they stop people from criticizing everything they did? Well, in the end, they both got on the donkey. I have seniority here. You have to sit in the rear. What heartless oh, folk! Two I'm... riders on one little donkey. Oh, don't believe it. Disgrace. Call PETA! And again, the farmer was so embarrassed that he decided he and his son instead should carry the donkey. Yeah, free ride. So they slung it over their shoulders and took off huffing and puffing. <sighs> I wish we hadn't gotten rid of that wheelbarrow, I tell you. Eventually, they came to a bridge, and by this time, they were so exhausted that as they crossed the bridge, they stumbled. And the donkey slipped and fell into the water. Yonimo! And then it ran away. It will now be very hard to sell donkey. I think uh, maybe donkey is smarter than us. Maybe so. I can't even figure out why you have an accent and I don't. But it was really the other people who made asses of us. I'm never again going to do things just because of what other people think, and I don't care if it does sound like a moral to the story. You must stay the course, yes. And so that was the philosophy he lived by. Uh, once I cleared it with my wife. And that's the story of What Other People Think. Hey, we'd like to know what you think. You can leave comments on our website, of course, at activated.libsyn.com. That's our podcasting site. Or you can find us at activated-storytellers.com and follow the links to the podcasting. Uh, so leave us your links on iTunes or Podcast Pickle. We'd like to thank our special guest stars this week. Thanks to Trina and Nash and Wiley. Yes, these are just some of Zephyr's friends here in North Carolina. We couldn't get them all at the same place at the same time. Um, it's got several more in the area and across the country, of course. Wiley and Zephyr are half of the band. The other half, Noah and Daniel, couldn't be here to help us. But these guys who did come did a really good job. And, and these are not uh, kids who grew up in the theater the way Zephyr did. So we're really pleased with how well they did. They did an excellent job. Thanks very much, guys. Oh, yes, absolutely. Coming up in April is National Library Week. We'll be in Chicago that week performing at libraries the week of the 15th through the 21st. So come catch a show up around that time for National Library Week. And we'll be off this week. Dennis and I are going to a PTO convention March 27th. We'll be up in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. We're leaving Zephyr behind as we can play some gigs with his band and do some more work. And then we'll catch up with him in Chicago. 
And we hope to catch you all next week. See you later. The Activated Storytellers perform at schools and libraries nationwide. On stage, we use American Sign Language, physical comedy, imaginative props, and a giant oversized book to bring the stories to life. For booking information, check our website at www.activated-storytellers.com where you can also find out when the Activated Storytellers will be performing near you. Read a story or order one of our audio CDs. Until next time.